السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر ریسپیکٹیڈ ویورس آل اٹینڈیز اینڈ ہز ایمیننس شیخ حضرت مفتی منی احمد آخون صاحب دامد برکات ہوں لالیہ ود یور ڈیو پرمیشن آئی وڈ لائک ٹو شیئر سم بیسک رولز آف اسپرچل کلینزنگ ایز وی ایز یو نو دیٹ وی ہیو آل گیدرڈ ہیئر ٹو اسٹارٹ آور جرنی آف اسپرچل کلینزنگ اینڈ لائک ایوری پروسیس ان دا ورلڈ ہیز سم پری ریکوزٹس سو ڈز دا پروسیس آف اسپرچل کلینزنگ وچ از تسکی اے نفس سو there are 10 points or 10 rules of spiritual cleansing which have all been taken and derived from surah muzammil like uh, maulana umar uh, sahab damad barkatuhum has just elucidated on the fact that uh, and he proved the point that uh, the tasawwuf and uh, you know related uh, things of tasawwuf are proved from quran pak and hadith e pak so are the rules of these uh, tasawwuf and taskiya which are proven from quran majid this is nothing taken out of context this is nothing which has been made up by the people after rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rather it is all based on what quran and hadith sharif has taught us it's just that uh, the people did we as common people did not have enough uh, information or enough wisdom to dive deep in the in the in the teachings of quran that's why we have to rely on our shuyukh mashayikh who have extracted the crux of uh, crux of our teachings of islam that's why we have to take it from them we cannot make up anything and this is nothing made up so first point or first rule of the spiritual cleansing keep in mind that all these rules are prerequisite out of these 10 rules if anyone is missing in your life you are not completing the requirement to start your pre uh, uh, start your spiritual cleansing so it is very very important that we pay attention to these points i will go over two points uh, out of 10 uh, in the interest of time and also to keep it brief and crisp inshallah i will sum up and summarize the points in a way that are understandable comprehensible and actionable so first point is the most basic the most fundamental rule of all uh, successes in the world and hereafter is the is the fact of iman and tawhid iman means a uh, belief system and this comprises of believing in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all his angels all his messengers all his books on the day of resurrection on the on the fact that there is uh, life after death and that destiny is determined by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone if any one of this element is missing from our belief and iman our iman is not complete and we cannot start the journey of spiritual um, uh, enlightenment so it's very clear that the first and foremost duty for all of us as the students of tasawwuf is to embrace the fact that we have our iman as a complete iman no one single element can be missing from our iman what it what it does uh, now once we have uh, uh, examined ourselves and we have come to the point that yes alhamdulillah we have uh, believed in allah his messengers all his books all his angels uh, on destiny on life after death and the day of resurrection then what does it lead to what uh, what it should lead us to what is the purpose of this iman then why should we have this iman in the world the the, the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us that wa ala allahi fatawakkalu in kuntum mu'minin that you should only trust allah if you are a true believer it means that your iman should lead you to total trust on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what is required by having iman in us this uh, reminds me of a beautiful story of hazrat ibrahim khawas rahmatullah alay he was a very eminent saint of his time and uh, one of his students once asked him uh what is the reality of iman can you describe it to us so hazrat ibrahim khawas rahmatullah alaihi said if i tell you right now it will be only words and they will not convey the message to you but i am planning to travel to makkah if you come accompany me in that journey you may be able to learn what is what iman is 
so that the student uh, went along with him uh, along the journey to Mecca and on the way they stayed in a jungle. Uh, there they ran out of food and uh, Hazrat Ibrahim Hawass was Wali Allah. He had a special connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he was a friend of Allah. So what used to happen was that every day he would, uh, there would be two pieces of bread like pita breads you can call two pita breads and two bowls of juice would appear in front of Hazrat Ibrahim Khawas he would he would take them and he would share it with his student so a few days passed by and that's how they just made their sustenance and they ate it they thanked Allah and the time was passing by so one day um, an elderly saint like man appeared in jungle on a horse and that elderly saint man asked Hazrat Ibrahim Khawas uh, you know some questions and he had a brief meeting after which he left so after he left that student who was curious about learning Iman he asked Hazrat Ibrahim Hawass Sheikh who was this person who appeared in front of you in the jungle and then he disappeared so Hazrat Ibrahim Hawass told him that he was Hazrat Khizar salam, and he wanted to stay in my company for a little while I did not give him permission. I did not let him allow. I did not uh, let him sit in my company. So that student was very surprised. He said, why did you do that, Sheikh? So Sheikh uh, uh, Hazrat Ibrahim Khawas told him, I did him for a reason. That uh, when I, after, after I uh, spoke with him, I got concerned and fearful of the fact that if I stayed in his company, I might depend on him and I, I might start to depend on him instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hence I will lose my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Kamil trust the complete trust that I had on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I did not want that so, that's why I just let him go and I you know I apologize for him this is the power of Iman that once you have developed that level of Iman then you only trust in Allah so our Iman should guide us towards trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ali sallahu bi kafin abda. Once you have believed in Allah, then is, isn't Allah enough for you, for his servant? If you have come in the servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then why do you fear of something, of anything in the world? Isn't Allah enough for, 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 for his servant? Imagine, think about it for a minute. Allah is enough for us. The only thing is we have to have a complete Kamil Iman on him that yes, he is my only sustainer, he is, o he is my only supporter and everything in my life, destiny, everything that is happening to me is by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I submit myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why in one hadith, beautiful hadith, uh, which reflects the importance of uh, being a mu'min and Iman, uh, having Iman in our lives, reflects the fact in which Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I wish I would have met my brothers. So Sahaba Karam uh, in his blessed uh, company asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, aren't we your brothers? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you are my Sahaba. My brothers will be those people who will come after me but will have believed me, will have brought Iman on me without seeing me ever. This is the power of Iman. That, Rasulullah, that, that this brings us to the brotherhood to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just by virtue of having Iman on an unseen thing. So Iman is all about unseen. Allah is not seeable. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have not seen him, but we have believed in him. And if we uh, practice Iman in the, in the purest forms, it will take us to that level which Hazrat Ibrahim Khawas had. Coming to the next point, uh, which is a part of Iman or Tawheed, uh, is Tawheed. Tawheed is, um, we all know, is the concept that embracing the oneness of Allah in our hearts. Embracing the fact that this is a singular being, all supreme being, capable of doing everything and all the things in the world without any assistance. He is all omnipotent. Um, and he is unique in his characteristics, qualities, uh, all, the, uh, all the workings are done by him alone. There is no partner who can share his powers or abilities ever. This is the concept of Tawheed. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to embrace this fact in his, in his Quran. La tattakhizu ilahayn ithnayn, innama huwa ilahu wahid. Do not make two, two deities for worship. Indeed, he alone is worthy of worship. Another beautiful point regarding this, which is a big fitna also these days. Um, 
that the fact of Tawheed, the, the, the fact of Tawheed is embedded in our hearts. It cannot embed in our minds, it cannot come embed in our eyes. When, when Hazrat Musa alayhi salam asked Rasulullah, uh, uh, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to let him be seen, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was given the answer by Allah ta'ala. Allah ta'ala told him, you cannot see me. He did not say, I cannot be seen. He said, Lantarani, you cannot see me. Here is the fact, here is the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given us that much power in our eyes. We don't have that much power in our eyes that we can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor does our mind have the ability to comprehend him in his entirety. He is beyond our understanding. He is not against our understanding. But Allah Ta'ala has given us one very, very unique piece of organ in our body which has the ability to comprehend the Tawheed of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, which is our heart. Our heart can embrace the concept that Allah is alone and that is all is required from us. That we have embraced Tawheed in our hearts that just say Allah is one, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Shadu Allah, ilaha illallah. Just say that from your heart and that is all is required from you. You are not required to see Allah and then bring Iman on him and consider him as a uh, singular being, uh, uh, all supreme being. No. And you are not required to understand from your mind. You will never be able to understand that. So Allah has made it rather easy for us to understand and practice Tawheed. Very important and very, understand, very uh, interesting is the fact and the, the, the anecdotal fact that uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani was on his deathbed. One of his uh, students asked him, you are about to depart us, give us some good advice, give us some final advice. He just said, alayka bit tawheed, hold on to the tawheed. You know, you want to know who Hazrat Abdul Qadir Jilani was? He was the king of all saints. He was the king undisputed king of the of the Vilayat kingdom no no wali has ever attained the level that Allah had give, given him in the kingdom of Vilayat and how he rose to that rank because he practiced Tawheed in the most pure form that was practicable so if we start to have really good belief uh, and Tawheed in our lives and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah you are the only one you are you are the only one who I refer to for all my needs you are the oh, you are my only sustainer you are my everything Allah will start taking care of you and he will start bringing you close to him third point which is the actually the second point of uh, spiritual cleansing is uh, by Salik or repentance of a uh, student of uh, spiritual journey. So repentance is a very important concept. After you have embedded this, Im this Iman o Tawheed in your heart, then uh, what is the practical step then you should take? That practical step is the repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repentance means making Tawbah, uh, asking forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making a pledge with Him, Ya Allah, I, I did some sins, some mistakes happened with, by me and I don't want to repeat them ever again. I make a sincere tawbah and sorry and apologize in front of you. May Allah please forgive me. This is the essence of uh, tawbah salik. Um, it can be easily understood by the analogy. Uh, think of, uh, of a barrel of good deeds or barrel of a cold drinking drinkable water uh, that is stored in a barrel but somebody comes and puts a hole in that barrel so that that water will start leaking out slowly slowly gradually until uh, the the barrel will get emptied out but if somebody comes in and plugs that hole the that drinkable nice water will be retained in the barrel and nothing will happen it will be saved so is the importance of uh, repentance and tawbah in our lives this repentance works like a plug in our lives Whenever something bad happens by us, some, if we ever, whenever we commit any sin or unlawful or haram activity, we go back to that plug of Tawbah, we go back to repentance and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in loneliness, Ya Allah, this happened by me, I did not want to commit it, but I just committed it, please forgive me. This will act like a plug in your life and it will stop losing your activities, good deeds of uh, Amal-e-Saliha.
because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, this repentance is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pointed to the fact that whoever brought good deeds on the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not point to the uh, uh, to, to the thing that whoever did good thing, things in the life. He said whoever brought it to me in, on the day of resurrection. It means that you don't have to only do the good deeds in this world. You, have, you are responsible to protect them and save them for the hereafter. And how will you save them? You can save them through repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope that, you know, that makes sense and that makes it more clear to you that how important it is to have a, a repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why our mashayikh have advised us to make repentance every night before you go to sleep. Astaghfirullah allazi la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Astaghfirullah allazi la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Or astaghfirullah say 10 times or 100 times, however many times you can say, but with your sincere heart, even one time if you say before you go to sleep, Ya Allah, I spent my day committing some sins uh, or if you did particular sin uh, ya Allah I did that I did not want to do that please forgive me I, I, I promise I'm not going to do ever again I'm not going to hurt your people I'm not going to go do any unlawful activity you just do that before you go to sleep and you will you are cleansed and not only that Allah will refund all your good activities that you had lost Allah will refund you back and not only refund you those old activity, all good amal salihah, he will add on more to that. Subhanallah. So this is the power of repentance and this is so very important. Um, last but not the least, just to understand that the, 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 the repentance or toba has three components. One for the past, one for the present and one for the future. The past repentance is that you are shameful of the activities that you did in the past and you want to make sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah I'm not going to ever repeat those mistakes again please forgive me for my past sins. For the present you are willing and ready to give up all those sinful activities if you are doing any of now. And the future ones are those that you have full determination in your heart and mind that you are not, never going to commit in future as well. So whenever you have all these three components of repentance um, ready and mature in your mind, only then your repentance will be accepted in, 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 in our lives. Uh, because Allah knows our hearts. Whether you say anything to Him or not, Allah knows our hearts. He is just looking at our hearts. He is not looking at our outer appearance. He is just looking at our hearts all the time. We have to fix our hearts all the time if we have to benefit from these majalis. This is a great majlis. Uh, this is the second session of uh, Tazkiyah uh, workshop. Uh, very highly pro reproducible in our lives and very practical steps are being taken um, in which uh, we are benefiting uh, for, for our a journey which is coming afterwards. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ability to act upon this advice and keep renewing our Iman. Uh, one thing also I wanted to share with you that our Iman also gets worn out as, uh, as, as time goes by. So uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has given us advice to how to renew your Iman through Kalma la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah which is practiced in these majalis which is the core which is the core and the, which is the backbone of uh, of majalis zikr that we are remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to renew our iman don't we renew our cars don't we renew our clothes don't we renew our other stuff in worldly matters just for few days few years we are renewing so much but what about renewing your iman allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a very easy way out to do that I hope everybody makes a commitment to himself or herself that uh, this is the time for me or for, uh, for all of us to renew our imans and let's do it every day. The more you practice, the easier it becomes. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share some thoughts about it. Hopefully they all benefit us. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.